Okay, so my clock says 11, so I'm gonna get started. Thank you everyone for joining us this morning and who's gonna pop in throughout our hour-long session from 11 to 12. Um, if you know somebody who would enjoy uh, exploring with us live this morning, give them a shout, share our feed, but we will, um, as always, be reposting um, the video after the hour on both our Facebook and our YouTube channels. So this is part two of us exploring erasers. Last week uh, we did part one and that, that is already live on YouTube and Facebook. Um, I am Kay Slater who um, and I am the preparator and um, gallery coordinator, one of the gallery coordinators at Art Starts. And also joining us in our chat feed is uh, our program manager, Leah Horlick. And the awesome thing about this duo is that um, my camera faces down so that I can focus on making with everyone. But Leah is here in the comments. So if you have any questions at all, you want to ask about uh, Art Starts, about the Art Starts Explorers program or anything, please feel free to reach out to her in our chat channel. So um, last week, as I said, we were we looked at uh, erasers, um, and we checked out things such as uh, the research into erasers. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in in a little bit. We talked about um, so like looking into how erasers are made. Um, we talked about making eraser crumbs, and this right over here you can see. So even if you didn't join us last week, I saved. Ooh, I don't want to lose that piece. I saved all of my eraser crumbs from last week when we tried all the different kinds of erasers that I found in my studio. And so they're ready to go and we're gonna see um, how we could explore using them in our art practice and art making um, this week as well. And then finally, uh, after we were done deep looking at this, we also looked at using um, erasers as a way of um, making rubber stamps here. So I've taken my sharps, uh, my sharp objects, and I actually stuck it into my eraser so that it was safe and I could see them, but I'll put that over to the side. And what we did was we carved an eraser, um, and I carved my name into this eraser and then made uh, a print out of it. So you can check out last week's video, that's what we had done. Um, but before we get started this week, as with all weeks, I want to get us started by looking at the three rules of explorers. And the three rules of explorers are these three rules or guidelines that we like to keep in mind um, as we explore art making together. And so the first way that, uh, the first rule is respect. And the way that we practice respect, because we're not perfect and we're always learning all the time, um, is that we practice respect for ourselves by checking in with ourselves, um, by seeing how we're feeling today, by uh, being ready to try things and um, letting whatever happens, happens because we're not trying to make something perfect today, we're just trying different things. We want to respect each other and if somebody else is here, maybe this week you have your neighbor and you're uh, safely distancing in your living room and trying together or you've invited your cousin over or um, you're trying this in a commun uh, community space and there are lots of people there and so we respect each other by uh, practicing social distancing right now, by listening to each other's words and signs. If somebody needs some time to themselves, we respect them. We respect our tools by um, using them properly. So that means like cleaning them and being um, safe and careful with them. But also it means that if somebody else is using a tool or we're using a tool and we're aware of other people around wanting to use those tools, we use our words so that we can all be sharing and using those tools. So if you are using a pair of scissors um, and somebody else is waiting, you could ask them what they need to do because maybe they just need something really quick and you could give them the pair of scissors and they could give them back to you when they were finished. So we want to practice respecting our tools and we also want to practice respecting the land and um, in acknowledging the land, we acknowledge that we are, or at least I am bringing this workshop to you on unceded Coast Salish territory and uh, in particular, I want to name the Musqueam, tsleil and Squamish people who are guardians and stewards of the land. And so as we play and explore on these lands, we want to try and be respectful guests 
and acknowledge that we are here as um, uninvited guests and want to be uh, respectful. So we want to practice respect for the land and the people while we uh, practice our art making today. The second one is that nothing is for keeps. And so everything that we're gonna to try today is just for trying, is just for checking things out. We're not trying to make anything for keeps, anything final, anything that goes up on the fridge afterwards, anything that is framed. I mean, maybe you make something really, really great, but the goal of today is to just try things. So if things are going really perfect and they're starting to look really good, I actually recommend that you try crumpling them up or ripping them up or doing something kind of scary or different that doesn't look as good as what you're making because that's how we learn, by trying different things that we're not sure of. Um, that's how we pick up uh, new skills and learn new things. And then when we're all finished, we wanna take what we made today and we wanna put it away. And even if that means a, a picture that goes back into the recycling bin, or whether it's the uh, eraser marks that we try putting on a page, um, that those are uh, put away or thrown out uh, properly. Everything that we're going to try to make today, we're going to take apart afterwards. And then the last one is that we have no expectations. And so that means that all ideas are good ideas. So if you have a picture in your brain of how you want something to go, you sat down and you want to draw a very specific thing, maybe put that thought aside, maybe put that picture in your head to the side, because right now what we're trying to do is just make without that final picture in our head. And that allows us to practice surprise because we don't know what's going to happen. It, it allows whatever to happen to be good, to be new knowledge, to be, sorry, not good. It, it allows us to, to find out new things and to learn new things together. And so those are kind of the three uh, rules that we have when we are exploring together every Saturday from 11 to 12 or any time that you can check out our videos that are hosted online. So, um, because we're exploring erasers, and erasers um, are tools, uh, it's, it's hard to look at the word eraser and not think of the word erase, right? Because that's the verb, that's, so we're using an eraser to erase. And so we have our piece of paper, we have a mark on the piece of paper, and we use the eraser to erase a mark. And hilariously, the eraser that I picked up was kind of old and dry, and it's just making a mark, and it's not, erasing anything. So I'm going to take this eraser and I can actually use the verb to erase here. And so, oh, and check out those cool crumbs. I'm going to pick those up and put them on my crumb page because I want to keep them. Um, and so the reason that I wanted us to kind of think for a second, because art making is also about thinking. We want to use our hands. We want to make things. We want to try things out. But while we are making, we're also thinking, we're considering, we're learning, we're talking about things. And so the whole idea of erasing something is to uh, get rid of marks and to, um, to uh, remove things from the page. But when it comes to mistake making, we really want to make sure that we don't erase the act of making a mistake because when we make a mistake, when we, when we do something we didn't mean to, uh, we have the opportunity to learn and we don't want to erase that because we wouldn't learn otherwise. Um, and so I wanted to start this week's session by acknowledging that last week when I was talking about how um, erase, like the history of erasers, I referred to um, the indigenous people of South America as the Spanish indigenous, and that was incorrect because I wasn't talking about them. I was talking actually specifically about how the indigenous people, so. There you go, I'm writing it down. And I'm writing it in a pen because it's important. I don't want to be able to erase it. Um, of South America. And so um, they were actually colonized by the Spanish. So when I say Spanish uh, indigenous, I don't want to erase that mistake. Um, I want to acknowledge and learn that I referred to the wrong people when I was talking about us doing this research about how erasers were made. And if I make a mistake, especially when I'm making art making, I don't want to erase it because I want to learn. And so here, I'm going to put this aside and take a, a pencil. And so this is a, this is a way 
of when you're learning to write. Isn't that hilarious? I didn't bring a pencil. Was this, this one sharpened? I had all of these erasers here and pens, but I had no pencils. So if we were, let's say, learning our letters, um, and the way that we want to learn our letters is A, B, C, and the first time we start writing them, we accidentally write them backwards. If we just erase that, then maybe we'll make that mistake over and over again. Instead, if what we do is if we keep these pages, these, these um, tries, these, uh, when we explore this together and we just allow us ourselves to make these mistakes and keep these mistakes and not erase them, then we learn that, oh, no, this is the way, this isn't the way that I want to do it. I actually want to do it this way. So I'm going to keep this as an example of what I don't want to do so that I can do better the next time. And so when you're practicing, I suggest not erasing your practices um, because they're not mistakes, right? So you want to draw that happy face and you try drawing the, the smile and it goes off to the side and that's okay. Leave that one there. Don't erase that, that happy face. Do another happy face underneath. And every time it will get better with practice. We don't want to get rid of our mistakes. We want to be able to learn from them. And sometimes that means leaving them there and being uncomfortable with them and being okay that things aren't perfect as we learn our, our art making. Um, so I wanted to acknowledge my mistake last week and uh, I was very fortunate that my friend and coworker, Leah, helped me and shared her knowledge with me so that I could do better this time. And now because I know better, I'm able to tell you how you can do better. And that's how we learn by sharing um, and not being afraid or ashamed when we make mistakes. We, we talk about it. And so we don't want to erase our mistakes. We want to use our eraser as tools to do uh, cool and innovative things. But the mistakes are still there. Okay, so that was a lot of talking. Let's get right into um, trying to explore using erasers as tools and not as um, getting rid of mistakes. So the first thing I wanted to do was I got really excited last week about my eraser crumbs and you saw that I kept them and so here I'm going to push this up just a little bit so that we have a little bit more room put that right there and so last week as I was going um this was I carved it off an, off an eraser and these were the cool little kind of sneaky marks that happened when I rubbed an eraser across the page and now I've got all of these really interesting different marks here that I can look at and so the first thing you can do is just sit and look at them and think about all the different ways that they're different. But these are actually objects now, right? They're not just erasers. And sure, you could try using them. Like I just pulled up this little piece that I had pulled off here. You could still try and use them as an eraser, right? See how they work when you make a mark and how good they are at erasing those marks. And maybe they'll work, maybe they won't. Maybe your fingers are smaller than mine and these little pieces are easier to hold. Or maybe your fingers are larger than mine and you, uh, the rubbing of your skin makes something else happen. Try all the things, right? Try all of these and see what happens. Oh, can I even open, pick that one up? There we go. And see what happens when you try using all of these ready-mades. They're already ready to go. You don't need to, um, you don't need to make them, they're already made. That's what a ready-made means. Um, but now these are objects, right? So they're not just erasers, they're eraser crumbs, they're something else. So that means that they could become something else again. And so what I've done is I took another piece of paper here and we're gonna try two different things. So the first one was, is I went and got um, a glue stick. And so if you have some white glue or a regular glue stick, um, but also with this kind of uh, exploring what happens when you wet the page, right? Because if you wet the page, that will also change the state of the page and might allow things to get stuck. If you have some paint and you are in a clean space, uh, what happens when you use paint as a glue? But I've just got this glue stick right now. So I'm going to, and I'm not thinking of any picture in particular, we're just exploring what happens if, and I'm just gonna put some random marks on the page I can't see them, and that's good because I'm not planning. I just put a bunch of blue marks on it. I'm going to put that over to the side. 
And I want to see, because what happens if, and I don't know, I've never done this before, I want to see how many of these will stick to the page just using glue like this. So I'm gonna bring them all down like this onto the page. Oh, a little snake one didn't want to come off. I'm gonna push that down, so that's interesting. So that, that one that I used, oh right, so that's why that one's sticky. So this little weird snake was from the, um, the kneaded eraser that I used in the previous weeks. Um, and so it's already kind of sticky. It's like a, a gummy, tacky, poster tack um, material. And so it's already kind of sticky on its own, but I'm still gonna throw it on the page and see what the glue does. Okay, so now let's see. Let's see what happens. What happens with the glue and these eraser crumbs? Oh, check it out. So without trying, um, to make a specific picture or a spe specific image, all of a sudden I have this new texture on the page just using eraser crumbs. And what does that mean? What is that like? So do we want to draw a picture out of it or do we want to try and add more things to it? How does it make you feel? Do you, do you like the idea of using um, eraser crumbs or is it usually something that you throw out and you don't you don't usually think about it this way and so you have to you have to live with it a little bit here I'm gonna try it in ways I, I don't know what's gonna happen so look this time when I did it I got a few more crumbs but this long piece fell off it's okay because I'm just trying oh but check out this one okay so in doing that remember how I said that this this uh, uh, the kneaded eraser was kind of sticky it also picked up some of my eraser crumbs. And so now it has an interesting look with the gray and the pink on it. I kinda like that. Yeah, I'm gonna put this one to the side because I, I think that looks really interesting. Okay, so some of them stuck and some of them didn't. And we, we kind of learned that the bigger, heavier ones, even this one, this one stuck. So the amount of glue that you put on a page probably changes um, how much, uh, how much it, it sticks to, but find out. Um, if you used white glue instead of um, a glue stick, how much does that change what sticks on? Um, how does it look with the, the uh, white glue or with water on the page? Um, maybe some of these smudges on a wet page. Actually, I think I have some water right here. Yeah. So I want to check this out. Right? We're exploring everything. So I'm going to put this one to the side because that, that's really interesting and I want to be able to compare the glue pieces with maybe a water piece. So let's see, I don't know what's gonna happen. There you go, so I added some water to the page. And what happens? So some of the little eraser pieces got stuck into the page. Oh, but now it's starting to smear here, that's cool. Okay, I'm still gonna move this, this little piece because I really liked how that all stuck together. And I think I'm gonna try something with that afterwards. But so now the page is wet and the eraser bits are sticking. Oh, this one didn't. Okay, so that piece didn't want to stay with us. But these pieces, they're stuck to the page because of the, because of the water, right? And so there's a couple of ways that we can explore this now. I could leave it and see what it looks like when it all dries. I could find out which of the pieces actually stay stuck when it dries. I could be intentional and I could add marks to the water so that I know where the water is when it dries. I could, oh, I could add more of the small pieces. Oh, I could erase around the page and add more pieces this way. And that's the nice thing about exploring because we're not trying to make one perfect finished thing. We really can say what happens if, and this doesn't have to be perfect. And if it dries and it doesn't stay looking like that, that's okay because we're going to get rid of it all afterwards. It's this moment now that we're taking a picture with our brains and going, oh, this is what it looks like when we use eraser bits on a wet piece of paper. And we could, oh, check it out, that fell off, that's cool. Learning, 
finding out what happens if. Um, and so you could also take a picture of this if you or your guardian or your parent or your teacher or even an older sibling had access to a camera, you could take pictures of how these things look as you go along and have an archive, an archive being a, a copy of what happens without having to keep the picture itself. And so this is kind of more abstract. This is, I didn't really have anything planned. I just wanted to see what would happen if, but you could be really intentional with this as well. Intentional meaning you think it through um, as you go along. So maybe I, I want to put this piece here and for whatever reason, maybe you don't have a reason, but you decide I want to put that piece there and I want to put this piece here. And maybe you start seeing a form as you go along and go, okay, well, I actually want to, I want to make something that looks like a picture. So I'm going to pull this piece up here. Oh, okay. So maybe the, maybe this is hair, that white piece there. And maybe this is a hat. Maybe that's some hair over on the side. Or maybe those are two really big ears. I kind of like that. Okay, so those are two really big ears. And then this really thick piece here could be the body. Oh, and I've kind of already got an arm there. So here, I'll move this piece down here. This is kind of like a textured skirt. So I think I'm going to leave these pieces down here. I like that. It's like a big textured skirt that has a, a long train to it. Or maybe that's the ground. Here, I can push that down here. And I'm just using erasers, right? These are just eraser bits. This is just the crumbs. I didn't, I didn't have to buy anything. I didn't have to make anything new. This was just using the eraser crumbs after I explored last week. And so in an art making session, as you start making things that you would normally just throw out or push off the page, look at those things that are happening um, as you're trying different things. And you'll be surprised to find that you've got way more to work with than just a perfect marker or a perfect piece of paper or um, maybe you don't have the color you want, but now you can try something different. So, so being limited by what you have available can sometimes yield some really, really cool results. All right, there you go. So that was just using erasure crumbs. And I used the wet part of the page to kind of frame. And if you've watched us in previous weeks, frame being the idea that you're looking at it um, through a frame, right? Everything else is kind of cut away when you have that frame. And here I've got my viewfinder right here. If you want to go back and look at previous weeks, if you haven't been exploring with us, this is a viewfinder, one of my favorite tools to, to have when we are exploring art making. It's just a piece of cardboard where we cut the cardboard out. So if you've been working with us since um, our first week, you might have one of these kicking around. And now you can look at the picture through your viewfinder. And there we go, just using eraser marks. I have created a little a little creature. And I think this would have, wouldn't have would have been as interesting if I had only used one kind of eraser. But maybe it was. Maybe at home you, uh, you only had one kind of eraser. But if you only had one kind of eraser, what happens when you erase different kinds of marks? When you erase pencil versus pen versus crayon versus uh, pencil crayon, right? Try erasing all the things and see how that changes the eraser crumbs as you're going along. Okay, so that was with the bigger chunks. I want to put that piece back in. And that was just water, right? The water just kept it in place. It didn't even use glue for that one. So I'm going to move this one to the side. On top of those scissors there. And then just wipe this off a little bit and bring this piece back in. And I can't, I can't escape it. I think that this kind of snaky piece that was on the crumbs over here, I think it looks like a mouth. And when we're exploring art making, you'll be, um, you'll be surprised how often you find a face in things. And that's, and that's, uh, that's pretty common, right? If you're constantly trying these things and you're just putting uh, random stuff on the page and you're just trying to see what happens and you find a face, that's very normal. That's, we, we see our face in the mirror really often. People take our pictures. 
especially with social media now where people are taking pictures and are sharing uh, pictures of themselves or taking a selfie or taking a portrait. People are looking at faces all the time. But we're also looking at faces when we communicate, right? So when we're talking to someone, when we're making eye contact, uh, when we're learning from somebody, we're looking at each other's faces. We're looking at faces all the time. So it makes sense that we would see faces when we're trying things, even when we don't have something uh, in particular in mind, like we didn't, we didn't plan to have a face here. But I see a frowny face. And because I see that frowny face, this line here ends up kind of looking like where the nose would be. And then these spaces over here kind of end up looking like eyes. And so I'm going to be really uh, deliberate and start using my pencil to start, start tracing some of these marks, but leave those eraser marks there so that they're part of the picture as well. So there's kind of a chin over here of the really frowny face. Oh, see, I wanted to wipe that away, but I, I pushed my hand away at the last minute. That's okay. If you're not thinking about it, you're just getting into the drawing and all of a sudden you, uh, you accidentally sweep away some of it, that's okay. Leave the sweep. Check out what looks different now that you've run your, your hand across the page. Some of the crumbs will probably still be there, especially if you're doing what I did with the glue here. You'll be able to see what, what is happening um, when you run your, your hand across the page. I'm not going to do it just yet because I caught myself so that we can finish this drawing, but at the end, you know, let's, let's see what happens. Okay, so I've got kind of a chin here, right, or the outline of the face, and then I made, um, I exaggerated the chin underneath the sad face here, and then this is the part above the lip, and then there's a nose, there's a nostril right here. Oh, and it's kind of hard for me to draw right in this space because it looks like there was some glue there, but I didn't know that until I started drawing. Here, I'm gonna bring that nose over here. And this is like the shadow of the nose in the middle. And then I'm gonna start putting an outline of an eye here. And we looked at eyes during our tracing week uh, a little while ago. So uh, if you want to um, explore making eyes, uh, there's a video from two weeks ago where we talked about deep looking and drawing eyes. So you can check that out in a previous video. But I'm gonna leave that as kind of the inside of the eye. And I'm gonna use this to be the start of the eye. And, and, and this, this person here, this figure is kind of crying. So I'm gonna leave this as if, like, as if they're crying so hard that the tears were coming right out the side of their eye there. And so I'm not gonna move it. I'm just gonna bring the eye over here. And I'm gonna draw that circle there so sad that the eraser marks are coming out of their eyes and leaking down their nose and past their mouth. And maybe some ears over here. And the rest of their head is off the page. Cool. So just by having these eraser marks, they inspired me. They, they gave me um, some ideas to be able to follow and to start making a picture out of it. But as, as I said before, what happens if I accidentally whoop, smear the picture, right? I wasn't thinking about it and I just started to wipe it across. And that's okay. Let's, let's see with this new, these new eraser crumbs, what we can do out of it. And we've got these marks now as well. These could inform what we're doing as well. Okay, uh, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold the page in half. open it up again and see what happens. Oh, okay, cool. So I've got kind of this mark here and I'm gonna turn it around so it's not actually a face anymore. Okay, so what if, oh, okay. So what if, because there's kind of more concentration down here and it kind of gets less up here, I'm gonna take that chin mark from before and I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. And it's okay, you don't have to use all the lines and you don't have to use all the pieces when you're imagining and you're trying these different things because we're just, we're just using the same page. It doesn't have to be perfect. It could be a drawing on top of a drawing on top of a drawing. It could be uh, marks on top of marks on top of marks, right? It doesn't have to be perfect. And using the same piece of paper over and over again is great because then we're not using a lot of paper. I mean, if you're taking paper from, the, uh, from your recycling bin, that's great. Um, because we're not, we're not using paper um, for uh, 
the perfect end project, right? So there could be writing on the other side of the page, and that's, and that's fine, because we're just going to recycle it when we're all finished. Okay, so I'm going to make this into a big beaker. There we go. There was an opening at the top. Maybe I'll make some lines around the outside here. Maybe I'll add some bubbles to this. Oh, you know what? I think even more, and I'm going to change my mind, I think this kind of looks like um, fire sparks, right? With the color of the, of the pink. And so that's okay that I drew those lines there, whatever. I'm now going to make this into a campfire. So put some lines at the bottom. Right, there's the wood. And then I'm going to add a couple of lines here to show that it's fire. And then maybe there's kind of a dark night around it. Look at, this is where I tried to draw where there was already um, glue and it kind of makes it a lighter mark. So dark night, dark, 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 around like that. And then all of a sudden the sparks from the campfire were sparks from our eraser crumbs. So what can you make? What are you making with your um, eraser crumbs? And don't forget, if you don't have enough eraser crumbs, you could just keep making more, right? So get another piece of paper out and just keep erasing. And then you've got more uh, art making materials, right? And if you wanted to try and make things in different colors, uh, you grab different color erasers. There you go. Okay, so this one, these ones are all long pieces. So I'm going to take those long pieces and I'm going to add those to the fire at the bottom. So all of a sudden they become lines in my picture. There we go. There's my fire, just using eraser crumbs. And so that was really that was really interesting, and that was really cool. And here I'm gonna put all these pieces back over just in case I want to use them later. But don't forget, we're just trying things. Nothing is for keeps. So we put this picture in our brain. We think it's really cool. Yep, that was an interesting thing to try. Oh, sorry, I knocked my light with my hair. That was a really interesting thing to try. But we already tried these things, so now we can start again, right? It doesn't have to be precious. We don't have to do any of these things for keeps. And now we can ask again, what happens if? So I've got all these eraser crumbs on this page now with all of these marks. What happens when I use them on this page, right? Nothing, nothing has to be for keeps. All right, so those are eraser crumbs. I'm really interested to see what you are all doing at home. So if you have permission from your guardian or parent or teacher or whoever you're working with right now um, to get a picture of what you're making, I would love to see it, whether you want to post it in the comments or whether or not you want to email it to us um, or send it to us in a private message. I would love to see um, what you are making at, at home. That would be really great. Okay, so I'm gonna put these over here. Those were eraser crumbs. And now what I wanna do is I want us to look at erasers that I'm sure that a lot of you are very familiar with and it's the eraser at the end of the pencil. And so um, I don't know about you, but I am not a huge fan of these erasers. I find that they smudge, um, that they get dry really fast. And even when they aren't dry or they don't get dry really fast, uh, I use them up really fast. And then, so before I'm even done using the pencil, they end up being empty like this. And so I don't even have an eraser anymore. So basically when I use pencil, I um, either pull the eraser um, end out or I just always make sure that I've got um, a big eraser with me. But for these ones right here, so what happens if you have, you know, you buy your new box of pencils or a bunch of them collect or they're old because you found them at the bottom of your, um, your bag at the end of the year and they're not doing the job as an eraser, right? They're not erasing things. So sure, we could draw with them, right? We could, we could try and make them into eraser crumbs for our other projects. 
But what if we looked at them themselves? So just like in the previous uh, session where I carved into this and this became a rubber stamp, right? So the carving into the eraser was the same as making an um, a rubber stamp. What if this becomes something that we can put the paint onto? And so I've still got the cup from last week where I put a little paint here. And I'm gonna do that again. There you go. And this is very old paint. <laughs> I don't use this one very often and that's okay, right? You could add a little bit of water to it. Um, maybe you have an ink pad at home. Maybe you don't even have any paint or ink and um, if you ever had a chance to go and uh, go online and look up, I don't have paint or I don't have ink, you will find so many things that you can find online to make marks with. So um, I, for one, I really like cabbage. And so I boil down cabbage and I make ink out of cabbage. Yep, just out of a vegetable. And you, you would be able to find, or so you're able to find so much stuff in the kitchen that you're able to uh, use as ink or paint or as mark making tools. Um, so don't worry if you don't have any um, paint today. There's a, there are so many things. And if you can't think of something to use, just drop a, a note in our, um, in our chat channel and I will give you a bunch of ideas to try. Okay, so what happens if we use the end of our pencil as a mark making tool. So I'm gonna drop this into the paint, right? Put it on the end and pop. So now I've got a dot and now I've got another dot and I have another dot and another dot and another dot and another dot. And every dot looks a little bit different depending on how much ink I have put on the page or how much paint and I can go over it again. And depending on how hard or how soft I make the mark, it looks different. In fact, I really liked that one that I just did there because it made kind of a dark line on the outside of where I pressed it down um, on the page. So like the, the, so the paint um, or ink collected around the outside of the eraser and made this really interesting circle. And there are artists that work in nothing but dots. So if you had multiple colors here, I don't, I just have the, um, I just have the blue right now, but if you had multiple colors of paint or you had tried to make uh, dyes or inks out of different kinds of vegetables or roots and or even just dirt, finding dirt outside and adding a little bit of water to it um, and then using the end of your pencil as mark making tool. So I'm gonna put this to the side just as an example and I'm gonna grab another piece of paper here and I'm gonna work just in dots using my eraser. And whether you're exploring at home at the same time right now and making something, or if you're just watching and being inspired, I'm interested to see how long it takes before you can figure out what I'm trying to draw just using dots. Okay, let's go. I'll admit it, I'm trying to make it a little bit difficult so you can't guess right away. And this could be a fun game you could play with somebody else, right? How long does it take them to figure out what you're trying to make using just dots? So far, I haven't gone over any of the dots. I've tried to make the dots all stand on their own. But what happens if I, whoop, <laughs> if I start to put them on top of each other? What happens when you start to put them on top of each other? And if you had different colors of paint, what happens when you start layering the different dots on top of each other? 
And what happens when you put lots of dots on top of each other versus only a few dots? And what happens when you have lots of paint on your pencil uh, eraser mark uh, versus a little bit of paint? What happens if, right? Always ask, what happens if? All right. Starting to guess what I'm trying to make. It's okay. It's okay if you can't guess. There are games that people play, right, that are all about guessing what people are drawing. And even really good artists, when they get together and they draw, it's a different skill to be able to draw something and to convey um, a picture that you have in your head and have everybody understand it. That's, that's actually a job called an illustrator, and that's, that's what I do um, as uh, another part of my art making is translating pictures in a way that is understood by a lot of people very quickly, right? And so it's not just about me drawing one thing and people saying that it's pretty or nice or that they like looking at it. It's important that I'm able to convey or to, to show information really fast just by using um, pictures just by using images and not everybody can do it it's it's a hard skill and just because you're not an artist doesn't mean that it's not a, an important skill so um, programmers and people who work with websites or people who design the um, street signs right when you're using pictures uh, either with words or without words, and you need to convey an idea, it, it can be really hard to think about all the different ways that people read or understand images. All right, I wonder, I wonder if it's any more clear what I'm trying to do. I'm gonna add a little bit more paint to my page, or sorry, to my, my cup here. I want to point that out as well, right? I'm just using a cup, right? Sorry, the lid from a um, from a coffee from a coffee cup, right? And so, even though it's a compostable uh, coffee coffee mug, um, these stick around for a really long time. So you don't need to use um, a clean piece of paper or a palette. You can just go to your recycling bin and see what you can find. And generally, uh, especially for putting paint um, into our water systems, it's safer for the environment when you allow paint to dry on a surface. So whether you're using rags from an old cut up t-shirt or you're using um, plastic that you were gonna throw in the garbage or in the recycling, um, and when it has paint on it, it can't, be on, it can't be put it back in the recycling bin. It does have to go in the garbage because it does have paint. But it's better than washing it down the sink because when you wash paint down the sink, even though we have treatment plants in, um, in Canada and so-called Vancouver, you're still putting paint down the drain and it's possible that it could, uh, it could have runoff or it could clog in your drains. So generally it's a better idea to be using um, something that will, the paint will dry on and that you can throw out versus um, putting, um, putting it down the drain. So I'm gonna add a couple more marks, see if I can make this any clearer. And we're just trying, right? So maybe you start using points or pointillism, drawing using points, right? Using the um, making dots using our um, pencil eraser, so pointillism. So maybe you, you're doing this and then you show it to somebody and they don't know what it is. Well, that doesn't mean that you didn't do a good job or you weren't successful. What it means is that you should go back into your drawing and keep adding dots until it becomes clearer. Okay, so to this point, I've only used the round part, right? I've just gone straight up and down onto the page, perpendicular with my pencil to make these interesting different marks. So really hard, really light, lots of paint, a little bit of paint, just to be able to make these marks. But there's so much more of the eraser that we can use. And maybe you've already tried it at home. 
why do I have to go like this when I could go like this or like this or like this? Let's see what happens, right? We don't just have to use one part. There's so much more of the erasure that we could use. And now we have this interesting line, depending on how much paint we had on the edge of it. It's not super straight and clear, and that's okay, right? Because we're not using a pencil, we're not using a ruler, we're not using a tool that was made to make a really straight line. So it being not perfect is kind of part of what we're trying to explore. So what happens if I don't actually have the page on a straight surface? So now I'm gonna make the line just using my hand on the page. How does that change the line? Or what if I wrap the page around my eraser? Right? You don't know what will happen until you try it. Actually, I really like that. I'm gonna put a lot of paint on here. I'm gonna put it at the top of my page. And then I'm gonna bring it all the way down. See what happens. And I don't know. All right. So it kind of made, oh, it made a really interesting mark up here. Very organic, kind of looks like, kind of looks like petals. And then it kind of made these smear marks over here. I'm gonna make that on a, just a plain piece of paper so we can see that one more time and just see what happens. And if you don't have multiple pieces of paper but you do have multiple colors, right? You could wait for this page to dry and then try it again using a different color. And what happens when you need to use a different color? Does, does the eraser pick up different colors in different ways or is it exactly the same? If you have paint and vegetable ink, or if you have paint and dirt, or if you have um, just pencil or just eraser marks. How is it different? Try all of the things and ask people around you as well what they're trying and then try it yourself because just because they tried it one way doesn't mean that when you try it, the two of you won't learn new ways uh, of exploring that tool. And we're still just using erasers, right? This is still our eraser session. So you can see, I really, I really like this. It does kind of look like a petal or a leaf here. It's really, it's really interesting. Um, and then it had kind of these smear marks over here, which I really, really like. Oh, what about this? What if we were to take the eraser and smear it across the page, right? This is still just all using erasers. All of a sudden, your pencil became so many more things than just the, the lead, just the, the graphite in the pencil and the eraser to be able to mark it. And when you've got a bunch of paint on it, how does it erase? Try erasing it now. Does it erase the paint? Now we've got these interesting Eraser marks, so the erasure crumbs again. What if we were to bring the erasure crumbs into, into our picture and add texture to the paint that we already had, right? Now it's kind of, now it's kind of a furry, a furry plant. And are plants furry? Have you ever looked at a plant so close up to see whether or not there aren't little fibrous marks on it? Right? So as we explore and we learn things as we're drawing, it can be fun to go back and go and look at the things that we were, um, that we're drawing and learn new things. And check it out, I am actually able to erase a little bit. I'm smearing a lot of the marks, but you can see how this is lighter here and that this is darker here. So now the eraser could be used both as a way of transferring material, so we're transferring the paint onto the page but also as a way of removing some of the pigment, some of the marks on the page and making it lighter. So if I was gonna go back to this picture and, uh, and add some more marks using all of these different ways that we just practiced and learned and tried things out. And here, I'm gonna move that blade because we wanna respect our tools by always being safe. Move that out of the way. Um, so we've got all these different techniques, these different ways that we learned 
of how to use our eraser to make these marks. So now I'm going to take this back over here again. I'm going to rub off some of these because I still had some um, eraser crumbs stuck in the, the paint. And what happens if I start erasing at this picture? Maybe nothing. I don't know. This has been sitting here for a little while. It looks like it's dried a little bit. That one still had some, oh yeah, so it's smearing here. That's interesting. Yeah, so it's in some places, it still had some, and now it's, it's making these really interesting lines where I'm pulling the paint across the page. And keep going, keep trying them in different places to see what happens. Some places are drier than others. Okay, so I'm going to leave the eraser marks on the page and I'm going to add pigment to the page that has eraser marks. So before we, we added paint to the page and then we erased, but now I've erased and I'm going to add, I'm going to add a little bit more paint again. And you can see I'm not using a lot. Sometimes, especially, um, especially if we get excited and we don't use paint all the time, we think we want to use a lot of paint. And I'm just, I think, I think this, um, this Liquidex Basics you can get at uh, most local Canadian um, art stores. They're very, very inexpensive. They're like two bucks. Um, but you don't need very much of it at all, right? I've only done maybe, what, that's maybe a pinky's nail worth of paint. So not very much at all because we're only pulling a little bit onto our pen, or sorry, onto our eraser. I mean, maybe you're trying with a whole bunch, but after you've tried a few of those and you know what happens when you put a lot on, you don't really need a lot, right? So I can just leave that for a little bit and keep going with what I've got. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna now start using the edge of my eraser because we learned on this other page that we could do that. And see what happens when I use the side of my eraser. I let the, the, um, the eraser crumbs be on the page and get picked up both by my eraser and the page to see what happens. Remember, we're not trying to make anything for keeps. It doesn't have to be perfect. So all we're trying to do is answer the question, what happens if? And we have eight more minutes that we're exploring together. And so if you have a picture um, that looks really good, that you, you, that you think um, it looks perfect and that you kind of want to keep, now's the time. Now's the time when I encourage you, try to make something different. Maybe fold it in half. Maybe rip up the page. You know how much I love to rip up paper when we have permission, right? When we've asked the people around us if it's okay. Especially because if you're using paint right now, that's starting to get really messy. Um, but this is my studio and I am, I have a clean, dedicated space right now. And so I am going to give myself permission. So for everybody who was watching, if you hadn't figured out what I was trying to make using uh, dots. It was a flower. And so this was the stem here. And this was my, my leaf. I'm going to use the side again of the eraser. It's got all these pieces. It kind of looks like the wind is moving it because of all of the staccato of all of the dots that are all over the place. Um, so maybe it's a windy day with the flowers. Um, and then Oh, check it out. Okay, so now I'm gonna I'm gonna use circular motions over here because I hadn't tried that yet. Yeah, the eraser is really great of being able to move paint onto the page or ink, right? And then maybe I'll see if I can get a bunch of this paint off to try bringing my the actual eraser back into it. I'm really surprised I haven't ripped the page yet. I see this is expectations, right? I think I had the expectation that the page was going to rip and it didn't. I practiced surprise. I'm surprising myself. Okay. So as I said, if you're at the point where you think that picture is looking really good, this is the point where I suggest you try something really crazy. 
something that you wouldn't normally expect to do. If it's going really, really well, try crumpling up the page and see what happens. And you might be really surprised at what happens. I know because I love crimp, crump, cr sorry, crumpling paper, but it added this kind of interesting texture to the page that I wouldn't have had if I hadn't crumpled up the page. And even more wild and crazy for some people is starting to rip up the page, right? See what happens. Because remember, it's not for keeps. Everything that we're trying today isn't for keeps. And if this, if this scares you, or if this makes you nervous, or it causes you to be angry or stressed out, that's okay. We're practicing respect, and it can be really hard when we start practicing these things, especially if in the past you've kept all your drawings and all of your pictures in the past. It can be really stressful to have somebody invite you and encourage you to try something really new or to uh, rip up or uh, get rid of something that you have put a lot of work into, and that's okay. If this week you can't do it, that's all right, but think about it and watch what I'm trying to do. And maybe next week you try it a little bit differently and you do it with the goal of ripping it all up at the end, right? But when we don't have any expectations, it means that at the end, whatever happened just happened. And we don't have to feel like this is really precious or really perfect or really worth keeping because all that was worth keeping were, was the experience, the trying things out, the what happens if, and then answering that question. Okay, so I've ripped up the page into four different pieces, and this is still an eraser um, uh, workshop, right? So now I have four different drawings to keep working on. So for this page right here, where I'd had these pieces, what if I add some glue to it? Cause we tried using glue at the beginning. Put, leave that glue there. And then on this page right here, uh, I'm going to, oh, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add some pencil marks to this page over here. Just draw all over it. And then this one right here, I'm gonna try with my fingers to collect up any of the erasure crumbs that I still have here. Maybe I'll make, I'll make some new ones. And by doing this, right, by making some more erasure crumbs, I'm cleaning, I'm cleaning the paint off of this eraser. And remember, um, sorry, not remember, maybe you weren't here um, or you haven't seen the previous weeks um, episode, but I talked about where what what um, what happens when you actually draw on your eraser. And some people always, or sorry, some people say you shouldn't draw an eraser because then it'll make marks on the page. But if you have an eraser that's just for art making and you put the pencil on here, you don't have to worry about it because you can always erase off the um, the pencil marks that you've added to your eraser, right? So if you draw on your eraser directly versus drawing on the page. How does that change the eraser crumbs, right? And for me, what I'm noticing is that the eraser crumbs themselves have more of the marks, have more of the, um, the pencil marks in them. But you can see, right, I've just erased it away. So it's no big deal. You can draw on your eraser, no problem. And so I've made some more crumbs, put those on the page. All right, and then the last one, you know what, the last one, I'm just gonna practice ripping some more because I really like ripping paper. There we go. Put in small little pieces. And then you know what? I'm going to take one of my erasers. Let's see what happens when I use the eraser to hold my papers there. So there, I made a little sculpture with my paper and my eraser over here. This one I had the glue on. So I'm just gonna see what happens when I put the glue on the page with the dots on it. Oh, maybe I'll add some more paint to the one with the glue on it to see what happens. All oh, the paint doesn't stick as much to the glue over here. I wouldn't have known that if I hadn't tried that. It's sticky together again. Right, always asking, what happens 
if. Oh, I kind of like this. It's like this, this blob over here was starting to sneeze and it sneezed some, some marks up, upwards. Or if I put it this way, maybe this is the mouth here and sneezing all this blue out to the side. And then over here I had these pencil marks, so I'm going to race across the page towards where my paint marks and my dots were and see what happens. And I don't know. I don't know what's happening for you at home, but we won't know unless we try. And then for this one right here, I had all these cool marks and they're kind of sitting where the crumples of the page were. Maybe I'll move those more up towards this over here. Oh, maybe this is a spaceship. So this ends up being my spaceship here and this is the fire that is outside of the spaceship. There you go. I, I don't know if I would have thought about that as fire if I hadn't tried that earlier with, uh, with the eraser crumbs. And oh, look at all this, these marks that I made over here. I really like those. I'm going to pull the eraser crumbs over here as well. And so maybe this is, this is the smoke now. So the white eraser with the, with the graphite made kind of this gray texture. And so now I've got smoke and fire coming out the back. All right, so that was Exploring Erasers Part 2. We are coming up on 12 o'clock right now. We tried, um, we tried to use our eraser crumbs from the previous week and we made more eraser crumbs as we went around. We talked a little bit about mistakes and how we don't want to necessarily erase all of our mistakes because mistakes are important and we learn from our mistakes and that erasers aren't just for erasing mistakes, right? Erasers are a tool. Um, the mistakes are still there. We talked about reusing old eraser bottoms. So if erasers start to become old and crumbly and aren't actually erasing the way we want by reusing them um, as a transfer device for paint, and then we explored what happens when we use all those different techniques all together and the different ways that you can create new things. So I'm going to leave the feed up a little bit longer as I start to clean up because that's, the, that's one of the parts of Explorers is that we always want to uh, put away and um, have responsibly uh, recycle and um, uh, take apart everything that we made because we're not keeping anything at the end of the session. And uh, I want to encourage you to come back next week as we start to explore using the alphabet with art making. So this video will be reposted shortly with captions. Uh, I encourage you to tell your friends to share the video um, and I welcome you to share comments in, um, in our chat channel. Did you enjoy the session today? Did you learn something new? Did you make something that you want to share? Did you have an idea or did you have a suggestion of ways that you think uh, we could be doing something different um, or better? We want to hear everything that you have to say. So I'm going to leave the channel up for another five minutes. Leo will still be there. Um, and then I will get this up online later today with captions. Thank you so much for joining us and I look forward to seeing you next week.